A century after its invention, the airplane has become a common thing in our lives. We have all seen some airplanes. Some of us have seen many airplanes. They all seem to have one thing in common. That is, they all have one or more vertical fins. From the very first airplane in history. To a modern jumbo jet plane. To a future supersonic airliner that only exists in people's mind. Or from the world's smallest single seater. To a behemoth airplane that has a wingspan larger than any other planes. Every plane that we find, with almost no exception, has at least one vertical fin. Why does an airplane need to have a vertical fin? The technical term for vertical fin is vertical stabilizer. It suggests that a vertical fin should have something to do with stabilization. Normally, when flying level and straight, the plane has its nose pointing to the direction of the plane's movement. And the relative airflow is in the opposite direction, if we assume there is no wind. In such a situation, the pressures on both sides of the vertical fin are equal and everything is in balance. As a result, the plane will continue to fly level and straight. What will happen if, for some reason, the plane's nose turns to the left or the right of the plane's direction of movement? Let's consider a case in which a gust of wind pushed the nose to the left. The right side of the vertical fin would expose more to the relative airflow than the left side. As a result, the air pressure on the right would be larger than the air pressure on the left, which would push the tail to the left, restoring the plane's original heading. Such automatic restoration helps the plane to maintain its heading and gives it the so-called directional stability. A plane with directional stability flies like an arrow rather than a tumbling stone. Providing that directional stability is the vertical stabilizer's number one job. Secondly, the vertical stabilizer also contributes to the plane's lateral stability. Consider such a scenario, a straight and level flying plane encounters the turbulence and is rolled to the right. Now, the vertical fin cuts through the air very much like a wing, creating a pressure differential between the air above the fin and the air below the fin. This pressure differential will generate a moment to help roll the plane back to wing's level attitude. Therefore, the vertical fin helps the plane maintain its upright orientation in flight. This is the vertical stabilizer's number two job. I think there is a third job that the vertical fin does, but is seldom mentioned. Rather, people seem to like to talk more about the problem this third job tackles. It's called adverse yaw, which means when the plane banks to one direction while its nose turns to the opposite direction. This is an awkward problem to say the least, but apparently it has been a very common problem that most pilots had to deal with including the Wright brothers since the dawn of the aviation history. Correct me if I am wrong, my understanding is that a sufficiently large vertical stabilizer can eliminate the adverse yaw problem for the plane. This is what I consider as the number three job that the vertical fin does, to yaw the plane so that its nose follows the direction that the plane is turning into. How does this work? Let's look at a plane banking to the right. Being perpendicular to the wing, the lift generated by the wing tilts to the right when the plane is banking to the right. This force pulls the plane to the right and makes the plane slip to the right. And in the opposite direction, the relative airflow hits the right side of the vertical fin. Pushing the fin to the left, which means turning the nose to the right. This action happens continuously and the end result is the plane turning smoothly with its nose leading the way. This should explain why I think a good vertical fin can prevent the adverse yaw problem from happening even without the pilot's intervention. Now, how is it possible then for a plane to fly stably without a vertical stabilizer? Okay, this B-2 bomber is not a very good example, because people say its flying relies on complex computer stabilization. Here, 
We are talking about static stability without active flight control. Let's take a look at the PowerUp B2 model that I designed and built. It has no active flight control to enhance its flying stability. And all its flying stability comes from the way it moves in air as a rigid entity. First of all, have you noticed the sweep back leading edge of the wings? I'm sure you did. This simple and apparent geometry actually does the number one and number two jobs of a vertical stabilizer, contributing to the plane's directional stability and lateral stability. As a wing sweeps back further, its drag as well as its lift decreases, given that the same wing flies at the same velocity and at the same angle of attack. When the nose of the plane doesn't point to the direction of the plane's movement, one wing gets ahead of the other wing. This means the forward wing has a smaller sweep back than the backward one. And thus the forward wing will generate more dragon than the backward one. As a result, the forward wing will be pushed back and the backward one will catch up, restoring the nose to point to the direction of the plane's movement. That's how sweep back wings give the plane its directional stability even though the plane doesn't have a vertical stabilizer. Furthermore, if the directional stability is insufficient, we can add sweep back control surfaces to the outer portions of the wings. These control surfaces create drag and the drag also changes with a change of their sweep backs, similar to what happens to the sweep back wings we discussed earlier. The drag differential of the control surfaces is very effective to yaw the plane back to the right attitude since they are so far away from the center of gravity of the plane. So, a pair of sweep back wings with sweep back draggy control surfaces installed close to the tips of the wings should be able to achieve satisfactory directional stability. In terms of enhancing a plane's lateral stability, the number two job of a vertical stabilizer, the sweep back feature of the wings can also help. For example, when this B2 rolls, the sweep back of the lower wing becomes smaller and the upper one does the opposite. Therefore, the lower wing will gain more lift than the upper one, helping the plane roll back to the wing's level attitude. If the lateral stability provided by the sweep back wings alone is insufficient, we can always add some dihedral to the wings to boost the plane's lateral stability, as I did so to my little Horton wing. Last but not least, how does a flying wing without a vertical stabilizer such as my B2 model deal with the adverse yaw problem? Very much like a vertical stabilizer, the features that give my B2 model directional stability also suppress the plane's adverse yaw tendency. Because of the similarity, I won't spend more time here to explain how the sweep back parts provide a moment to counter the adverse yaw. Rather, I'd like to draw your attention to a less noticeable feature of the B2 model, which eliminates the adverse yaw problem altogether from its root. Can you see that the wings are twisted? To illustrate the twist, let me turn the plane over so that we can see spatial relationships between different parts of the plane more easily. The model is made of four pieces of flat foam boards. A cord in the outer portion of the wing is parallel to the leading segment of the wing at the wing root. Therefore, there is an angle between the cord in the outer portion of the wing and the cord at the wing root. This means cords in the outer portions of the wings have a smaller angle of incidence than those close to the wing root area and the wing is essentially twisted. According to NASA, such a wing twist can do magical things, one of which is generating the so-called Prover's yaw effect. It is beyond the scope of this video to elaborate on this effect, but suffice to say Prover's yaw can make adverse yaw disappear altogether. For more information, Please search for NASA's Prandtl-D project on the internet, and you should be able to find a lot of relevant contents available to the general public. That's what I did when I wanted to learn how to make power-up planes that don't have tails. I hope I have included enough information in this video to help you understand how planes can fly stably without a vertical stabilizer and without electronic stabilization. Let me know if this video makes sense to you 
or if you'd rather see more about how to make a particular model than me talking about general theories. Thanks for watching.